video series, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a website and upload it to your local host. To start it off, I'm going to show you on how you can install XAMPP, which is a great application for accessing PHP my admin and all the great features. Warning. When you download XAMPP, it doesn't mean that people can access your website on the World Wide Web. You will need a third another you need another hosting company to be able to do so. The hosting company that I use is called x10hosting.com. It's great because it's free. You get one gigabyte worth of space, you get two free databases, and the links go so. But for this video, I'm going to show you on how you can set up your computer into a nice programming environment. As you can see, I'm using Notepad++ to not to record, but to program all of my website pages. And I will show you how to set it up to be appropriate for website programming. Firstly, you go to our web browser, and you search up in your search bar on, or on Google, XAMPP, and press enter. XAMPP, as I said before, allows you to pro not not to program, but gives you access to PHP my admin, and allows you to send emails to yourself just to get a feel. Now it doesn't mean you can send the email software to the worldwide world. It only allows you to do it on your local host. So let's say your internet stops working, but you need to have access to our PHP. That's when XAMPP comes in. It's running for my internet to load its slides and recording. Once it's loaded, you need to look. Actually, I spelled XAMPP wrong. You need to look for ApacheFriends.org which is the first link in Google search. I'll put the link in the description so you don't have to search it. You click on the link. And then it should load. Once loaded, your website should be looking like this. Now you scroll down and it says, what is the XAMPP? XAMPP is the most popular PHP development environment. XAMPP is a completely free, easy to install Apache distribution containing MySQL, PHP, and Perl. The XAMPP open source package has been set up to be incredibly easy to install and to use. So now, I'm going to scroll down, and here are your three options. If you are on Windows, you click on Windows. If you are using a Linux, you click on Linux, and if you're using an Apple, click on Apple. And it tells you the latest version of your PHP, which is 5.5.11. But I've already downloaded XAMPP, so therefore I'm not going to be downloading again. Downloading XAMPP is just like any other program that you download. You can just click next, next again, and then you'll be asked to install it. Let's open it up. Once you have installed it, click on your start bar, or go to start me the menu on Windows 8. Then search up XAMPP. If you are using an Apple computer, click on the spotlight and do the same thing. Now you've got two options. You've got Bitmami for XAMPP or XAMPP control panel. Click on the control panel to get your control panel. The XAMPP control panel has a very nice UI user interface for beginners who are setting using this for the first time. Now, as you can see, you have five different options to 
the first one is to start Apache, to start MySQL. As you can see, files Scylla and Mercury have been disabled. That's because I asked for it to disable it. And Tomcat, which I barely don't even use. To start Apache server, click Start. Now it will now it will give you it will say attempting to start Apache Apache app. We'll wait for a bit. Then we go over to our web browser again. New tab. Type down local. Local. Host. No need to write down .com, .net, and so forth. You just need to write down local host. Press enter. And that now, this is a second of time to load. Let's see if XM control panel has started it up successfully. Status change detected. Apache is running. So now we should be able to go over to X to the local host once my taskbar goes away. As you can see, I've got folders. Oh my god. Go away on lots of crap. It's index of. Now, as you can see, I've got folders in mine. But your when you, once you download loading your file, like and you sign an Apache, yours will not look like this. It should ha just have this folder down here. Xamp. You click on that. I don't know what my computer is doing. It's having a spaz. There we go. Xamp is loading. Let's close these two tabs. I don't know why they're open. Okay, so once you click on the XM folder, it will take you to this page. On the left hand side, you have your menu. On the right hand side, you've got your content. For open SSL support, you've got you can type down one two seven point zero point zero point one, and that will still take you to the local host. But if you type this down on somebody else's computer and doesn't have local host installed, it will not load. Now, as you can see, go down to tools and you've got those same options. You've got mail, verbalizer, files, Scylla, FTP, and PHP my admin. In some of my YouTube videos that are yet to come, I'll be using PHP my admin. And this is a video was to show you and how to set up and install XM. The current PHP for me is 5.5.6. My one's a little bit outdated, but that's okay. You'll be able to follow easily. Now that we have loaded our XM file, let's go to Notepad++, which will be the application that I'll be using to show you on how to program in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and soon to come, PHP. As you can see, it works fine. Works like any other text editor, and it gives you recommendations. As you may have noticed, my one completes automatically. So if I type down P, it finishes off the sentence. How do you do that? First, you have to go to settings. And click preferences. Then a dialog should pop up. It's a little slow because I'm recording. On your computer, depending on how old it is, it should load faster.
Once loaded, preferences should look like this. You've got General, Editing, New Document, Default Directory. Recent Files, History, File Associ Association, Language Menu, Tab Settings, Print, Backup, Auto Completion, Multi Instance, Delimiter, List. First, let's go down to New Document. Format, Windows, UTF-8. Default language, HTML. That's what we'll, we will be using to you know, to be able to program websites. Now, let's go to Auto-Completion, which allows me to auto-complete like what it does in Adobe Dreamweaver. If you may have noticed when I was typing before, it auto-completes or auto-finishes. And this is how you do it. And as you can see down below, you've got options for bracket, square bracket, and HTML, forward slash, XML, close tag, which automatically closes. As you can see, when I use CSS, you've got these two things here. Click on that and click on that. And just to be just to clarify, we'll be using quotation marks and speech bubbles and speech marks as well. So be sure to have those two ticked for for future references. I think we're done in here. So why don't we just close and give this a test and make sure everything's working and how it should. That finishes off fine. That's fine. That's fine. Everything's working exactly on how we need it. Now, one more thing that we have to do to set up our brand new website, and that is going into the HDocs reference for XF. So each time you start, or start a new website, we want to use XF's file direct directory. This is how you do it. As you can see, my, my, my file directory is loading. You click on local disk. As so. And you go down to XAMP. As you can see, I do have RAMP, RAMP and RAMP developer. The reason why I do not use RAMP is because it doesn't work on my computer for some unknown reason. Double click on XAMP and then click on htdocs, which is pretty much root. So you double click. And remember those files that you saw before when I typed down local host? Well, here they are. To start a new website file, go right click, go to new, it should pop up, and then click on new folder once my one loads up. Stop moving. Now you click on new folder and you name that folder on how you want your on what you want to name your website. In this instance I'm going to call it tutorials. Press enter. And now your new website folder has been created. Go back to your to your website browser. Hang on, let me scroll down. As you can see, it says localhost forward slash xamp. That's the folder that you clicked before. Now let's go on to the folder that we just created. Tutorials. Once, once typed, press enter. 
since we have nothing in our file, it should take us to index of tutorials. That is all I want to show you in this video. If you have any questions or any problems at all, let me know in the comment section down below. In my next video, I'll be teaching you some basic HTML elements and CSS elements. Thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video and find this video helpful. My name is Robert Hilton. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and, it, and you can find this video tutorial on our new website. Our new website is in better stage, so do expect some errors. Thank you for watching, and I do hope this video has found was helpful.